Okay, good evening ladies and gentlemen. It is 6.30 p.m. We will call to order the regular meeting of the Tracy City Council on Monday, April 8th, 2019. To the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Bless you all. <clears throat> Thank you for the invocation. Oh. Everybody have a chance to look over the minutes? I think I'll to approve them. First and second discussion. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, any changes to the agenda? Just the one under 9A, it was that, uh, it was a report from Chris Larson, the engineer. Just uh, mentioned that he hadn't been here for a couple of meetings because he hasn't had a reason to be here and thought I'd just give you guys an update by a report. Okay. Um, so, All the approval is amended then. Thank you. Second. <coughs> First and second, discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? And uh, motion carries. Does anyone know of any conflicts of interest this evening? Hearing none, we'll move on to public comment. Would the public like to comment? Okay, moving on to the report. Uh, project updates from Chris Larson. You guys all got a copy of it. I think the keys out of it were phase one is pretty much done. Um, there's just some final abandonment of, abandonment of old, ma old mains that needs to get ironed out this year. They just kind of ran out, ran out of time with some final lift and stuff last year. Uh, phase two, this uh, stabilization ponds, they'll be resuming construction in May and they're hoping to have them online by July. Um, they're trying to work out a plan now with the existing biosolids and the old ponds, trying to come up with the most cost-effective method to get rid of those solids if they need to be removed from site. So they're working on that. Um, there was a pre-bid meeting here today, and I, um, Shane, you were at that. I don't, was there anything to update on that? Was there no, it was maybe 10 minutes long, um, just kind of put things on the table as far as the two contractors that show up. I know there's several more that have plans, so we don't know what it's going to bring for bids, but <clears throat> just kind of some details on connecting houses. Uh, so we got some easements on um, doing the connections with the project instead of separate like we did on phase one. Um, some details like that, um, some sewer relocating in some areas that we found later. But other than that, it's pretty short and sweet. And then the only other thing he had on there was uh, 3, 3B, um, working forward on that for, they're gonna coordinate some televising with the contractor and the contract will be back in the area to finish up <coughs> a few that didn't get televised last year as well. Do we know when that's gonna be? No, not yet. Um, okay. I think that's kind of weather dependent as well. So, <coughs> your right. guess is as good as mine. They are coming right. from Mankato, so it takes them. You know, they want to come here and work for a few hours, so they're probably going to want to get a, at least a dozen of them to do. All right. <coughs> all lined up at the same time. So, you know what the plan is? Are they going to like send a letter or contact folks somehow? They have a list ongoing of the people that they didn't get the last time, and they've asked us for a few phone numbers and things like that for what we did have. And I, like Shane said, I think they'll coordinate those okay. with the letter that they'll send out for the ones for uh, Phase 3B. All right. All right. Great. I'm, I don't know if, if you know, Chris, or maybe Shane, you do. On the uh, chemical feed and mixing system, was that bid? Was that in the original bid? Is this an add-on? I don't remember. That's the only reason I'm asking. For the ponds? Yeah. 
Yeah, that's that should be original. Um, I don't think that was an add-on. Okay. That I'm just. I know we had talked about it. I didn't know where it was ended up at. So all right. Yeah, cause I think that like the boat ramp and all that is all included in the current plans. So for the elm spreading and. Yeah, but this is, and that's what is, that's what traditionally what we're doing now is with a boat, right? Yep. Okay, and I thought that's what we agreed to do going forward on this, the new project. But he's got in here a chemical feed and mixing system be necessary instead of the traditional method. Oh, it'd be alternative, so that it would be a separate contract. I, I think this is a cost savings measure that they're looking into because they'll actually, I, I think it's similar to like how they spray out on like uh, sides of roads and stuff they'll be able to spray it out into the pond versus having somebody manually go yeah. back and forth and, and that's fine but it's going to be a change order is my question yeah but I think it'll be a change order for the positive right. us. save us money that's all I have. anybody got any more questions okay We'll move on to uh, petitions, requests, and communications. The uh, Charter Commission applicants, Seth Schmidt, Matt Nakmus, and Ken Giles. As you guys are probably aware, we had three openings or three potential openings on the Charter Commission. The idea was to replace people so that they can continue operation of the Charter Commission. Is uh, process so they got all three at once and submitted to you guys for approval at once. Okay. Diane got out and beat the drum and <laughs> tried to recruit. It was it was hard to get people to, to come out for it to be honest with you because it's a daytime meeting so it's it's hard to get certain people. And they will all expire in 2023. Okay. I would make a motion to approve those three applicants if they're willing to serve. First and second, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries to approve the appointment. Okay, do you want to approve resolution 2019 24 then as part of that? Yes. I would make that a motion to approve 2019 24. All second. First and second, discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? And motion carries for to approve resolution 2924, 2019-24, appointing charter members. Lyon County Historical <laughs> Society, countywide tour signage, walking tour signage. I read the, uh, the letter here. So my question with that is, and, and I don't know if you know this or not, but who pays for these signs? Well, actually, I think that should tie into applying for a grant. Um, the Planning Commission, we had talked about applying for a grant for the Third Street project, if that goes through, because we can apply for the grant, and if we don't do the project, we obviously don't have to accept it, but it's so time sensitive that we can't go through all the proper channels to apply for it. So I think put, adding the signage to the grant could be a factor of whether, whether you want to do it or not, if the council wants to put these historic walking signs in. It's, um, as you can see, it's kind of like they'll take pictures of an old building and things like that, um, mm -hmm. you know, and kind of talk the history of the town. So maybe buy a building that, you know, we have one that's on the National Register, that would be a good example. Another one would be, in, you know, let's just say as if, as if the Anderson building got tore down, maybe an old picture of it during its prime, an explanation what was there, or, you know, things like that is kind of, kind of what they're going for here. Okay. But are they requesting that we purchase these signs or pay for them is that currently they're just asking if we if the city of Tracy would support having these signs I see <coughs> I I think it would be a good idea yeah, I say, do you need a motion for that 
I, not really, just kind of nope. guidance. Yep. Um, we'll we'll kind of work with them to get something presented to you guys. And if anybody has any ideas or certain things that you'd like to see on it historically, then that would probably be a good idea to to push our way. Otherwise, we'll just kind of ask around as well too. I like the idea. I think I think it'd be great. So I guess that's a tentative yes. We would support it. It doesn't hurt to check things out. Like you said, if you can get it as part of a grant. Mm hmm Yep. I think with the depot and everything that was here, if there was pictures from when we had that. I mean, since the railroad is a big part of the history, yep. you know, and we've got that little garden park right there. So, I mean, I think... There's plenty of I places and plenty, plenty of subject material to do it. Oh, there definitely sure. is. Yeah. And, you know, having wheels of the, over the prairie here in town, I think it would be appropriate for us to do that. That sign is similar to what they got out of the Tornado Memorial already, so. And they're stating in this letter that you guys would approve the pictures and locations of the signage before they would ever go up, so. No, I think we should support that. Update on service of Eric Alicer, Alcoser. So this is in regards to the Anderson building. Um, this is just kind of a complicated shell game where they're, they're hiding who owns the property, for lack of better words. And there was another party that was located, Roseland Financial, that is tied into this. And if we don't notify them properly and they push everything to them, and we do anything with the building, then you know we could be liable for certain things. So in the interest of due diligence, we should serve them as well for the same notice. So now, as of to date, uh, First United, First National United Acceptance Company. Is that right, Jeff? I think that's what the name First is. First National Acceptance. First National United, okay. Uh, um, and then Eric Elsora, El, El Corser, has been notified this Roseland Financial would be the last one that's in the loop to be notified. And that's in reference to under resolutions 2019, 25 to order the raising of the hazardous building. That's, that's how it has to be titled for that. But it's it's really notifying a third party that could be in the, in the loop. There was something in there about, <clears throat> it was like three or four deep as far as uh, companies that are potential here and this is a parent company of correct this will bridge the gap that could be manipulated later okay what's the time length of the time we notify them that they can before they can start tearing down the building well when they get the letter they get it's either 20 or 30, 30. days and then after that time frame, then it's 14 days. And then the council can do whatever it is. So it's not going to have, they're not going to start taking it down in the next two weeks. And there is a possibility we could shake the right tree. Maybe they, somebody could buy it before they tear Correct. it down. And it will be a council decision before yeah. it would ever be, yeah. you know, there's, there's no action being taken on it. It's just we have to do all the legal hoops first before you can even make a decision on it. Doesn't this have to go into the paper? as well for several His weeks? His notice will have to go into the paper. Roseland Financial will be served by the sheriff. Okay, so yeah. His notice, the is, what, four weeks is it? His notice, because he was served by the sheriff and it was unsuccessful. In fact, uh, there's doubt whether that person actually exists or not. And so he was not able to be served directly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is, too. And uh, because of that, uh, he will have to be, it'll have to go into the paper. I believe it's three cycles of the paper. This is right here, four weeks, I found it. Okay. Well, I would make a, a motion to approve resolution 2019-25, ordering a raising of the hazardous building on 157 Third Street and get this thing going. I have a first. Second. I have a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? 
Okay, uh, motion carries for approval of Re resolution 2019-25, ordering the raising of a hazardous building located at 157 Third Street. Um, call for a public hearing to close a runway at the airport, April 27, 22nd and 2019. What's that? So after Shane and I went to a meeting with the FAA last week, or the week before actually, we're finding out that the only way we can put up new facilities at the airport and um, new hangars eventually, a new AD building, there's a few things that we don't meet by the new regulations. And once you start making improvements, you have to meet those needs. Plus the FAA would just like to get all the airports to you know, be safer. In order to do that, some of the plans that they have require vacating a runway. In fact, all of the plans that they have for new buildings vacate order to vacate the runway. And it is what number, Shane? It's 0624? 624, yep. I kind of drew a line. Um, if you can kind of see the blue lines, those are the line of sight, and they are right here. So technically, if this runway is in here, this is the line of sight that would have to stay. And if you can see, this is the current location of our AD building now. And that line of sight actually goes right through our current building so really the way it's sitting right now <clears throat> the runway is not in compliance with the runway safety for the FAA so removing that would move this line out to here because it's a it's a pretty much you draw a line from the ends of the center line to the runways and that that's your sign the light line of sight line so it's kind of like coming out into an intersection and not be able to see around the corner The real simple version is, if we want any FAA money to expand our airport in the future, we have to abandon this runway. That's that's a real simple right. way to put I'm it. I'm glad they changed their mind because I sat up there and asked them to do that eight years ago and they said they weren't in the business of closing runways or closing airports. That's the one they, you got one of the ponds right at the other end of that Correct. runway that but if we close that, we could pacify them, but they wouldn't let us close the runway. So if they're if they're not opposed to it, you know, I don't know of any pilots that are going to. They actually brought it up. And that's that's they're unusual. borderline requiring it because, like I said, we'll still get our hundred and fifty thousand yeah. dollars every year, yeah. but we won't get anything additional, and we won't be able to. We won't be able to do anything with it if you have no room to 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 build. So no, I I've got no problem with that you're going to may run across a couple pilots that will object but once they see the whole picture and, and is that a grass runway yeah yes so there's three runways two grass and one uh one asphalt the asphalt will remain and then the uh the most favorable grass runway will remain and when they say favorable by wind condition uh, this has been recommended by our engineer this has been recommended by the faa it's, it's at the point where I realize that pilots want to keep as many runways as they can, mm -hmm. but it's, we, we don't have a lot of options and still be able to potentially expand our airport right. or at least improve our services. Right. They're asking for it. I think that's great. So the process would be to set a public hearing at the next meeting, April 22nd, and between then and now, the airport commission will be meeting on the 18th. I think, mm -hmm. yeah, 18th, and we'll get a recommendation from the airport commission as well. We couldn't get them to meet before this meeting, but no action has to be taken tonight except just to set that public hearing for the 22nd. I'd make a motion for a public hearing for a runway closure for the April 22nd meeting at 645. At a first, second, second discussion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries set uh, public hearing. Okay, um, municipal accounts payable. 
I'll make a motion to approve the municipal accounts payable without breakthrough beverage and the planning commission minutes from March 4th. Second. First and second. Any discussion? Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Make a motion to approve any expenditures with breakthrough beverage. First. Second. Second. Discussion? Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Looks like we have no unfinished business. If this is Mayor and Council Communications. Hearing none. I'm going to need a motion to adjourn. Unless anybody has anything further. Um, the library board minutes are in here. Do we need to approve them too? It's the last thing in the... I don't... It's not listed in the packet. Here. Well, it's in the packet. That's the last thing on the packet on the hand. Oh, you know what? It's on, it's on this one, but it's not on this one. So yes, please. I'll make a motion to approve the library minutes from March seventh. Second. First and second discussion. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. I'll motion to adjourn. Second. First and second discussion on that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? We are adjourned. <laughs>